Carlos asks a really good question. My question, how are you, I'm taking that's me, able to do all the things you do in a day and still have a life? You work out, you travel, you coach, you eat, you socialize, you do podcasts, you write articles, and you write books, and you read and reread books as well. How and where did you learn to manage your time so effectively, and could you teach some of us that need to do it as well? Well, um, boy, there's, there's, that's, there's a lot to that question. So let's go through the first thing. Uh, for my general fitness, longevity, and health, I have a very simple pirate map. I prioritize sleep. Sleep is very important to me. I, t I, I make coffee before I go to bed. I make my to-do list before I go to bed. Um, I wake up and I'm grateful. I do a one-moment meditation. I work out. And then I, I strive to get eight different vegetables in me every day, uh, which I'm probably out already after my first meal. Those are my, those are my daily habits for health and wellness, okay? Of course, I floss my teeth twice a day. And, that, well, there's, and now we're already to the, next, the, the first thing. I keep my floss sticks in the well of my car. So when I drive around, I floss my teeth. Um, when you ask questions uh, about how I get so much done, I would have to refer you to the other part uh, that I talk about in the books, uh, Now What and 40 Years with a Whistle. So the pirate map is the things I do every day to... I write every day, I lift almost every day, I eat vegetables every day, I drink a lot of water every day. The other is the pirate map, and a, a, pardon me, is a shark habit. One bite and it's gone. You'll notice that I always wear this shirt. It's because I have 16 of them. Why 16? That's all they had in North America in my size. I bought every single one. I never think about what I'm gonna wear. Uh, I can call, you can call any member of the family and say it's, this time of day, what's, you know, what's your dad, what's your uncle wearing? And they'll probably nail it exactly. But I'm also that way with everything. If you're writing a book and you say, Dan, will you write the forward to my book? I'll email you back. Yes, you send it to me. The moment I get it, I read the entire book and I write the forward and I send it back to you. I have done, I have turned around forwards in about four and five hours. And I, I, you've asked me to do the work and I do it. And then it's out of my head. And that's the key. The reason I like menus, a weekly menu for a family, Monday, week, Tuesday, week, that, Thursday, Friday, you got it, is because on Monday, I'm not thinking about what I'm going to make for dinner. I'm pulling out the things that need to be defrosted for that particular dinner. Or more often, I'm sticking them in a crock pot and I'm already, dinner is being made, dinner is made at eight in the morning. So when you do things like that, uh, you know, it, it comes from Revelation 315. Uh, yeah, uh, Revelation 315. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Don't be lukewarm. I think what hurts most people is that they're lukewarm. And when you ask me something, it's yes or no. And if it's a yes, quit asking me. I said yes. We're going to now move on to flights, hotel rooms, topic. Uh, if it's no, don't keep asking me. I find that very frustrating. Um if, if I'm going to write something, I write it, and then I'm done with it. Uh, when it comes time in the afternoons, especially when it's time to read, I read. I read for 15 minutes or half an hour, depending really on, <laughs> well, sometimes how good the book is and sometimes how many other things, I, how many other balls I have in the air. Um, I'm leaving for Europe tomorrow, and uh, when I packed for Europe, I noticed there's no difference between the way I pack for Europe and the way I pack for San Francisco. Um, I'm going to be gone for a month and I'm going to carry one bag. And the reason is, is because inside that bag is bags of bags. Okay. And I've got one for uh, sea and snow. It's uh, gloves, hats, things like that with uh, swim trunks and uh, these very thin uh, sandals I found. Um, if you want that, by the way, it's a Dan John workouts. It's in the essays. Uh, how I pack. But to me, how I do one thing is how I do everything. So I can't, I can't be, oh, whatever, packing for a trip to uh, Ireland, and then all of a sudden be real focused on writing. I have to, I have to get things done. And that's what a shark habit is. A shark habit is deciding what to pack and you pack it. A shark habit is I'm going to wear this shirt and that's what I'm going to wear. 
a shark habit of saying yes or no when it's time to say yes or no. Um, you don't have to be insane. I don't think I am. I Like you notice, I socialize very well. Um, this is my second podcast today. Uh, in between the two podcasts, I had a workout and then we had eight people, we had, we had eight friends over at uh, breakfast. Um, you just, if you can get things done and and I mean finished, I mean out of your brain pan, you're much happier. Um, there's a book wor worth reading uh, called Parkinson's Law. It's a much older book now. It's from the 50s by C. Northcote Parkinson. I find the book hilarious. And I, I lost my great copy of it. I, well, didn't I loaned it out, I'm sure. But there's a wonderful chapter in there about asking a retired old woman to write a note versus a very busy executive. And it's funny because it's absolutely what I see all the time. Uh, the, 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 the old woman uh, can't decide which stationery to use. She looks at 20 different envelopes, finally picks the one with the lace, then second guesses herself and gets six. Can't decide how to start the letter. And it's about a five hour process versus the way I would do that. I'd go, and I just did this the other day with a letter to Dick and Joy Notmeyer. Brrr, brrr, picture, 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 brrr, thank you very much, sign it, envelope, stamp, gone. Uh, that letter probably took me a minute and a half to write, print, sign. Um, you should have stamps right there in your, your uh, office like you do, like I do. I have stamps, I have envelopes, and I just go, blah, 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 and I'm done. So I can knock off a bunch of letters. Uh, some of the readers wouldn't know what a letter is. Uh, but uh, I can knock off a letter in about a minute and a half because everything's right there and I just do it. And that's the big part. I have my students, uh, I teach online, and they will put things off until the amount of work that's in front of them is an, is glacial. There's just they, 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 they just have so much work they can't push this glacier off a continent. You know, it's much easier to shovel snow when it's this high than when it's this high. So that's how I see the whole my whole life. Um, I, as a teacher, I was always the first teacher to turn in grades. Always. I prided myself on it. And the dean one time said, what do you don't take, you know, you don't, what do you, just rush through it? And I got, first off, the guy was a jerk because I didn't really care. But the point is, everybody in the facility knew that finals were coming up in June. So I would take care of my grades as much as I could in early May, so I could sit down with a student and say, okay, you're missing all this. You have about a month to take care of it. I wouldn't come up to him in the last week of school. I gave him a month. I had my quarter grades done before I gave out the final because it was so much easier for me to tell a student, you know, little Billy, I would tell students, you got an A first quarter, you got an A second quarter. All you need is a C and above on the final, and I'll give you an A for the semester. So you don't really need to study for this test. And they would look at me like, wow, thank you. Of course, the kid was still going to A on the final because I took all the pressure off of him. But if a kid went, you know, um, C first quarter, A second quarter, I'd say, okay, you know, if you want an A for the semester, you, it's going to be hard. But, you know, and so I was able to have those intelligent conversations with kids and uh, get things done because I got them done a little early. In my life, I've always noticed that early is always better than late. Days early, weeks early is better than 10 seconds late. When I was at Utah State, I would always turn my uh, term papers in, oh, about a month before they were due. And I would tell the professor, listen, I I mean, I got the nationals. I got the conference championships the week you've required. Is it okay if I turn in early? And if there's a problem, when you give me feedback? Well, every professor in the world loved it because they had one paper versus 50. And they'd say, they'd always get back to me, well, there was an issue on chapter, you know, an issue here and there, but you did great. Here's your A. Yes. And I, I wouldn't say I was class kiss. Okay, that's true. I was class kiss. Okay, I, I was class kiss. But the idea is by turning in early, it also, I also was able to do this with my brain. And I could fo focus on the, the NC2A nationals versus, you know, the Russian Revolution or, or the Decemberist uprising of 1905 or the, the doomsday book, you know, so that's how I do it. Um, and you know what? I would love it if you'd follow up and ask more questions on that. And that was Carlos, right? Uh, Carlos, I like that question a lot. All right.